Medication Administration. A nurse needs knowledge of how the medication works, the effects the medication has on specific organs, the intended action of the medication, as well as the adverse reactions to the medication. The absorption will affect the speed and the intensity of the medication's action. Various factors will affect the rate of absorption. Looking at the route of administration, this is where the medication actually enters the body. Another way it affects is the ionization, so the pH of the medication as well as the site of absorption. The dissolution will also affect it. The medication has to be dissolved before absorption can take place. We consider the patient's blood flow. Medications are absorbed more rapidly where blood flow is high. We think about the lipids or the fat solubility. The medication's formulation can have either a very high pH solubility or a low lipid solubility. The surface area of the absorption site, so the size of the surface area where the medication will be absorbed. We all look, also look at client-specific factors. So we think about what's going on, what disease process does our patient have. We think about the pathophysiology. We think about the individual's age. The distribution of the medication is affected by the circulation, the flow, and the medi medication's solubility and protein binding ability. We know that fats or lipids are essential to the rate of absorption. We consider the biotransformation because this can cause an increase in the medication activity and in indicate in activation of the medication or an increased excretion. Most of the medications are metabolized in the liver. The elimination is also considered. This requires the body's metabolism and excretion functions to work appropriately. Our kidneys are the primary organ for excretion. Other um, ways of excretion are the skin, the lungs, the exocrine glands, the liver, mammary glands, and the intestines will also do some excretion. The rate of excretion is affected by how well the kidneys work, how well the heart functions, as well as how well the liver functions. Therapeutic drug monitoring. This is used to monitor the medication concentrations in the blood circulation. Peak and trough levels are considered. These guide in maintaining the therapeutic medication levels. The peak blood level occurs when the medication is at its highest, anything below the toxic level. The therapeutic level or range is when the medication produces desired side effects. The trough blood level is when the medication is at its lower, lowest level of drug or medication lowest level of medication is the trough level this is measured prior to the next scheduled dose so roughly a half an hour before the time of the next dose the onset is the time the medication takes to produce the therapeutic effect the peak is when the absorption rate is complete and the med medication is distributed throughout the body. And the medication is also at its highest concentration. 
The duration is the length of time that the medication maintains its therapeutic effects. Before the nurse administers any medications, the nurse will assess the status of the patient by reviewing contraindications to the medication, looking at lab values, vital signs, patient allergies, and any potential interactions of the medication. A nurse needs understanding of pharmacology to perform the role in deciding whether or not it is appropriate for the medication to be delivered and to practice safe medication administration. A black box warning is placed on the labels of medications that could produce a lethal an iatrogenic result. An allergic reaction is when the body perceives the medication as a foreign invader or an allergen. This will stimulate the inflammatory immune response. Therefore, it will produce and release histamines and cytokines. This allergic reaction can range from mild to severe and produce um, specific physiologic tissue reactions. These reactions may include a rash, hives, swelling, circulatory collapse, laryngeal edema. An anaphylactic reaction is considered as severe and life-threatening. The immune response will produce dyspnea, hypotension, and tachycardia. A syndrome known as Steven Johnson's syndrome will develop 1 to 14 days after the dose of administration. This will be manifested by symptoms of respiratory distress, fever, chills, a diffuse fine rash, and then it will be followed by a development of blisters. Steven Johnson syndrome is a potential fatal medication reaction. Drug to drug interactions. This is anyone, any time that someone who is prescribed more than one medication, this will cause the effects to intensify of one medication or it can decrease the effects of another medication. The results will depend on the medication that is prescribed, the pharmacodynamics, and the effects on the pharmacokinetics. There are drug food interactions. This will impact the rate of absorption by either delaying or enhancing the absorption rate. Iron preparations are better absorbed with orange juice because of the vitamin C. They are poorly absorbed with dairy products or in acids that contain magnesium. The nurse will instruct whenever these medications should be taken with or without food, as well as any other restrictions. If the medication is ordered or recommended taken on an empty stomach, the nurse should administer the medication minimally one hour before or two hours after the meal. There is also a drug herbal supplement interactions this is similar to a drug-to-drug -drug interaction. So the nurse must assess if the patient is currently taking any herbal supplements and teach which supplements the patient should avoid based on the medications that they have been prescribed to take. Obtaining the patient's current weight before initiating any medications is the responsibility of the nurse. 
Medications are often prescribed according to the patient's weight in kilograms. A pediatric patient is specifically ordered medication based on their weight in kilograms. The dosage changes to smaller due to the individual's metabolism and excretion that is affected by the organ immaturity. There are some male and female differences in fat and muscle distribution. Older adults have difficulty absorbing, metabolizing, and excreting medications because of their age-related changes and the decline in their functioning of their organs. There are some cultural and genetic roles into, in the adherence of medications as well as the efficacy and the response to medications. Some individuals prefer herbs to treat and prevent illness. It is important for the nurse to determine any use of any herbal medications. Pharmacogenetics. This is how particular individuals and ethnic groups respond to specific medications. There have been studies that show certain genetic phenotypes that are found with hypertension. With this phenotype, there are individuals that do not respond to a specific classification of medications that are routinely used to treat hypertension. It may be necessary in this individual to add a diuretic to their medication regime. For the right client, the nurse will verify the client's identity using two different identifiers. Often the nurse may say, please tell me your name and date of birth. For the right medication, the nurse will confirm the name and the form of the medication, making sure that it is correct. The right dose. The nurse will check the medication and the dosage against the physician or the prescriber's order in the medical record. Right route. The nurse will confer confirm the route of medication per the order in the medical record. Right time. The nurse will confirm the time the medication is to be given and the last time that the medication was administered. Right assessment. The nurse will confirm any medication allergies, that the medication is appropriate for the client's condition. The nurse will consider any drug to drug or drug to food interactions that may, may need to be addressed with the prescriber. The nurse will also consider the lab work and or the vital signs depending on the medication to be administered. Write documentation. The nurse will document in real time the medication and when it was delivered and any other important information. Write to refuse. The client has the right to refuse medication any time. Right education. The nurse must provide education that explains to the patient the name of the medication, what the expected benefits are, as well as any potential adverse effects. Right evaluation. The nurse will check the medication to determine if any interaction may occur. The nurse will come back to the client's room to determine if the client has any adverse or any other type of reactions or if it has been 
and has the patient has the therapeutic effect of the medication. Medication errors will occur because often the wrong medication is given. For the nurse to ensure that the right medication is administered, a prudent nurse will confirm that the medication to be given is the same medication as ordered. Brand names or generic medication names may have similar spellings or pronunciations, and the nurse must be aware. The nurse needs to ensure that they can do dosage calculations because medications can be often administered with an incorrect dose. Dose-related errors occur from a displaced or a misplaced decimal point, incorrect math, or incorrect conversion in units. The time of medication administration may affect the therapeutic effects of the medication, cause adverse reactions, or the toxicity of a medication. Medication reference textbooks give frequencies when medications should be administered based on the pharmacokinetics and the pharmacodynamics of that specific medication. The Joint Commission has approved a brief or short list of abbreviations that may be used for ordering medications. The frequency and the route of the medication should always be written out. This will avoid any misinterpretation and errors. To confirm the right time, the nurse must check the provider's prescription, the client's medical administration, medication administration record, and the last time the dose was administered. There are various timings of medications. STAT, this means given immediately, and it is a one-time dose. STAT is derived from the Latin verse statum. This means immediately. STAT prescriptions need to be administered within 30 minutes of the order. Urgent now or ASAP prescriptions need to be administered between 30 minutes to one hour after the order. PRN is as needed medications. These are often required for specific symptoms. For example, a pain medication may be ordered based on the need for the relief of pain. Time critical. These are medications that are administered either 30 minutes before or 30 minutes after the administration time. These may cause harm or result in a substandard pharmacological effect if administered at any other time. The nurse is educated about medications to provide an understanding. This is a key aspect of safe and effective medication therapy. The nurse needs to understand why the medication has been prescribed, what side effects need to be reported to the provider. If the nurse is educating as they should, they will ask the patient what they already know about the medication and correct any misinformation that the patient may have.
Medication errors often occur due to failure of the nurse to follow the rights of medication administration, giving the wrong dose at the wrong time or the wrong medication. It may be a late or a missed dose when you look at the medication error. It can also be failure to check for accuracy of the medication prescription. The nurse must collaborate with both the pharmacist and the provider. If the nurse fails to assess for any high risk variabilities related to age, disease, lab data, allergens, or prior responses to any medications. If the nurse gives medications before verified by both the pharmacist and the members of the interprofessional team. If the medication is written as incomplete or illegible, if there's any missing components of the medication prescription, or any unofficial abbreviations that are not accepted by the Joint Commission will be considered as a medication error. If the nurse works under any stressful condi conditions with any numerous interruptions, the nurse will reconcile the medications so the nurse performs the medication reconciliation process. This is to document both the accurate and the comprehensive list of home medications upon the client's admission to the facility. So the comprehensive list will consider the name, the dose, route, frequency, and the purpose of any of the home medications. The nurse will compare the list of home medications to any newly prescribed medications during the current hospitalization and the nurse will reconcile any discrepancies. This may be con contacting the provider or the pharmacist. The nurse will update the medication list and repeat the comparison and reconciliation process any time the transition of care has changed during a hospitali hospitalization or at discharge. The nurse will communicate the reconciled medication list to the next nurse or care provider. The nurse will educate the client upon discharge and provide written information to the client about the current medication. Medication errors will result in more than 7,000 deaths each year in the United States alone. The highest risk of committing any medication error occurs whenever the nurse administers the medication. When an error has occurred, the client must be assessed immediately for any change in their medical condition. The nurse must notify the healthcare provider immediately to remedy any potential harmful effects. The nurse will write an incident report that will include the medication error, what happened to the patient, what actions did the nurse take, or what other people were involved, any circumstances that may have played a role in the medication error. The nurse needs to remember that they state only the facts in the incident report. And even though the incident report is a legal document, it is never ever placed or mentioned in the client's medical record. There are various strategies for reducing 
any medication errors. One is to make sure that the nurse always uses two types of identifiers to identify the client. Name, date of birth, social security number, medical record number. Another strategy is to use appropriate administration techniques for the prescribed medications. The nurse must calculate the dose of medication correctly and double check for any complicated ca calculations, any high risk medications, any IV medications, or any pediatric doses need to be double checked. The nurse should be aware and alert for any sound alike medications. An example would be dobutamine or dopamine, heparin, and hespian. The nurse needs to clarify any questions or concerns about the medication prescription with the healthcare provider. The healthcare provider's prescription needs to include the medication name, the dose, the form of the medication, the route of administration, and the time of administration. The nurse must never leave medications at the bedside and ensure that the client has swallowed all oral medications. The nurse should always have another nurse witness insulin doses and disposal of any unused narcotics. The nurse should always refer to the facility's policy. The nurse should become familiar with the medication before they administer it. Looking at a drug reference guide, calling the provider, pharmacy, the nurse should educate the client when any new medications are prescribed or if they have questions. The nurse must recognize that the client always has the right to refuse medications. The nurse must observe and assess before medication administration and after administration of PRN or new medications for either efficacy or adverse medication effects. The nurse will always check and confirm the patient allergies before they administer any medications. There are various routes of medication administration. One is enteral. These medications are administered through the GI tract. The GI tract, if you remember, is the mouth to the stomach to the intestines. Enteral medication forms will include tablets, capsules, or liquids. Sometimes the client may require an enteral tube. This is a tube that goes directly into the stomach or the medication or the small intestine. Oral medications may be provided through an enteral feeding tube. Topical medications are applied directly to the skin or to the mucous membranes of either the eyes, nose, respiratory tract, vagina, rectum, or urinary tract. Parenteral medications are given by any of these variations, intradermal, intramuscular, subcutaneous, or IV. These are administered by an injection. This means that these medications will bypass the digestive tract. Intravenous medications 
This delivers either fluids, nutrients, blood or blood products, medications quickly into the circulatory system. These medications may be given intermittently through an IV piggyback. This is often a medication that is diluted in 50 to 200 milliliters of fluid, and it is infused over a specific time. A central venous access device is a catheter that is inserted directly into a large centrally located vein for the purpose of administering medications. The medications are delivered directly into the central blood circulation, absorbed quickly, and the effects are seen quickly. The devices recommended for those who require frequent or long-term intravenous therapy are the central venous access device. There are various types of these devices. One is known as a PIC line. This is a peripherally inserted central catheter, or we have what's considered a CVC. This is a surgically placed central venous catheter. The type of the administration will depend on the length of the IV therapy, the medications that need to be infused, and the client needs. These various types of central venous access devices are covered with a transparent sterile dressing to maintain the site's sterility. It also will help to avoid any accidental removal of this central catheter. The client population has a right to be fully informed about the medications they are receiving. The education should include the name and the reason for the medication, any safe administration recommendations, an example might be with food or without food, any potential adverse effects, and what the client needs to do if any problems persist. During this education session, the nurse uses effective communication strategies. Teaching strategies may include using open-ended questions, applying active listening skills, and or using the teach-back method. A nurse must address the following areas related to medication education. The name of the medication, the medication effect, the adverse medication effects, the dosage, frequency, and any symptoms that are necessary to report to the provider. How the client is to take the medication, including any special instructions. An example may be checking blood pressure, pulse, or glucose levels. The client should be educated on how to read a prescription label. They need to know how to use any specific dispensing devices that could include medication droppers, medication cups, or syringes. The client is educated to maintain a complete list, including over-the-counter and herbal preparations when looking at their home medications. The client should inform all providers of any medications. This will help to avoid any duplicate prescriptions. The client is instructed to continue the medications unless consulting with the provider before they discontinue the medications, meaning that the client is instructed not to abruptly 
discontinue the medications. The client is instructed what to do if they happen to miss a dose of medications. And the client is instructed to only discontinue any medications as prescribed by the provider. And the client is provided a reason for why the medication is discontinued. 